Amen. Very good. Let's take the Word of God tonight. We'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Now, I, I know that it's going to be tough for you to stay awake. I will try to stay awake up here, all right? And um, we had a great meal together, and uh, thank you for the meal, all the service there. What a blessing that was. And um, yes, we are very thankful for Fairhaven Baptist Church and the college. And I do have quite a few. I've tried to hire as many as I can. And uh, they're a blessing. They are taught very well. Um, you do not have to worry about their spirit, about their servant heart. I don't want someone that just uh, teaches well and then wants to go home. They want to serve in the church as well. And uh, that is a great, great blessing. I'll tell you something as you're making your way to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But, of course, Levi and Bethany, they have a little boy named Jack. And um, he's my little buddy. And... Um, uh, we have a lot of fun with him. But when uh, Levi and Bethany told us that they were expecting, and uh, then when it got time closer, uh, she said that her due date was sometime in April. I was just jokingly saying this. My birthday is April the 23rd. And I said, I want you to have the baby on April the 23rd. Well, she had the baby on April the 23rd, all right? <laughs> and I told our church, I said, that's a good church member. They do what the preacher says, you know? And... Uh, the ladies had something else to say about that, you know, but, uh, but they're a blessing. And, of course, we just had Pastor and Mrs. McGovern that were there, um, and it, the Lord worked it out where they could be there when Bethany had the baby, and that was a great blessing. And so we're thankful. And obviously, on our end, my wife and I, Fairhaven means a lot to us because we've entrusted this college with our children, already with Abby. And uh, we were talking at the table what it was like when we dropped Abby off at college and we drove away. And I thought in my mind, whose idea was this? You know, this is a bad idea, you know, and uh, leaving our baby girl. And but um, we're thankful for what she learned here. We're thankful that she got to serve here and we're thankful for the influence in her life. I, I know as a father that I want other godly fingerprints on the lives of my children because God obviously has given us the responsibility and accountability to train them and raise them, but they need others. Yep. And, uh, you know, that is a part of you tonight. That is a part of your investment. And really what I want to talk to you about this evening is the ideal of our stewardship. And I want to preach you on this subject. You are a steward. You are a steward. Now, Stewardship has much more to do with finances than what we really think. Sometimes when we think about the idea of stewardship, we think of giving. But it has much more to do than that because stewardship involves all of our Christian life. In fact, I'm sure you've heard this story told. They were told of two men that got marooned on an island. Two men. There they were and... One of the men was anxious, worried, pacing back and forth. The other man was sitting under a, you know, a tree and just kind of taking the sun in. And, and the man, he was just kind of enjoying it. And the man that was so anxious looked at him and said, What is wrong with you? We're probably going to die here. I mean, we're never going to be found. And the man sitting under the tree, just he said, Listen to me. He said, I make $100,000 a week. And the other man said, that's going to do us no good here. He said, I understand that, but you need to know this. I faithfully attend church, and I faithfully tithe on that money. And he said this, my pastor will find me, all right? <laughs> well, I am here to tell you this. God, in a sense, will find all of us one day in our matter of stewardship. It is a very um, captivating thought to me to know that one day as a pastor, I am going to stand before a holy God and I will give an account of that stewardship of that church. God has entrusted with me with a wife. We celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary this past July and we got to renew our wedding vows. She said yes again. I was shocked, you know. And... Uh, we had the pastor who married us from Georgia come back, and he was able to renew our vows. It was a great, great blessing. 
My kids just made fun of all the pictures, you know, from the 25 years ago. But I have a stewardship to cherish her, to love her, to care for her. That's a stewardship. God has given me children, and I remember when the doctors told my wife and I that we would never be able to have children, and, and God blessed, and we prayed and fasted, and the Lord gave us children. There's a stewardship there that I will stand before God and give an account. And tonight, I want us to think of this thought that we are stewards. You are a steward. I am a steward. Let's look. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. I am aware of the time, and I'm aware that you're tired. And uh, Chris Starr told me tonight he's really tired, so I'm going to try to help him, all right? And so, but, uh, you know, th- Chris, I think we're preaching together tomorrow. First time since 30 years ago or something like that. And, uh, and I'm preaching last, so I've got the last word, all right? And so, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> all right. All right. First Corinthians chapter number three. Let's begin in verse number one. The Bible says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not not Yet are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Would you underline that phrase? Because it's very important. Notice it again. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me... As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, the Bible goes on to say, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If your man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. If your man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Notice verse 13 once again. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it. Brethren, tonight, you are a steward. I am a steward. May God help us. Let's pray together, and uh, may God, Lord, help and speak to our hearts. Father, I thank you for the privilege to be here this evening, and Lord, I'm among really what I consider heroes, heroes of the faith, men and women who are faithful to thee. And Lord, I thank you for many of these folks here tonight that are sustainers, that Lord, they have been a steward a steward of what you have given to them, and they have stewarded that. Lord, we know that, Lord, you will reward them one day. And Father, I pray that you will guide us in these moments. Give me clarity. Lord, enable me to do what I could never do in my own strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe that most of us in here tonight know that we are going to heaven when we die. We know Jesus Christ is our personal Savior. We have been reconciled to God. How important and how blessed we are tonight to know that we are part of the family of God. But if you are ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ when you die, let me ask you this. Are you ready to meet the Lord with the stewardship of your life? 
Meaning that we will give an account before God. We will stand before a holy God, the God who sees our motives, the God who knows why we did what we did while we were here on earth. Because the Bible tells us that every man's work shall be made manifest. Now, we're not standing before God to be judged for our sin. Thank the Lord that was judged on Calvary. But we will stand before the Lord and He will make manifest our work because the Bible says, for the day shall declare it. Brethren, stewardship involves all of life. And knowing that it involves all of life, it should settle many things in our hearts. Let me begin by saying that If you are making an investment in this college, thank you. Because your investment not only helps just these young people that spoke tonight, it really makes a difference in my children's life. It makes a difference in so many others' lives who are going to go out and touch other people's lives. Is it not amazing how God does His work and God entrusts things to us and we take those to other people and there is a generation after generation of the stewardship of God. May God help us tonight to understand that our life is making a difference. By by the way, I listened to these young people tonight and so well done in their testimonies. And uh, I want to say, really, that's the message right there. That's the message of these young people saying, you have invested in me. And and, uh, by the way, young people, let me say to you, and as you take what has been entrusted to you... uh, what a stewardship that is involved in. You know, I, I, I think tonight about people that made a difference in my life. Can I tell you something? In a sense, I'm indebted to those people because of the stewardship that God gave to them and they entrusted with me. I'm indebted to my mom and dad who took me to church, who, you know, who entrusted their lives with me. There is... I grew up with godparents, and I don't know if that was just a thing in the South, but I had a a lady and a husband in church that were my godparents, that my parents, if they ever passed away, they would become my parents. And I'm going to tell you something, those people invested in me. The lady tonight has cancer very bad, and the doctors only give her a few months to live. And I called her the other day, and I talked to her on the phone. And she is like a mom to me in many ways. And I told her, thank you for loving me. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for the investment in my life. And I'm reminded of the stewardship. They even given me things that I must give to others and that I must realize that it is the stewardship of God. By the way, folks, God expects of us who have been reconciled to Him to now follow God's intent for our life. You see, a part of the stewardship of life is not coming up with our own ideal of what we are supposed to do with life. It's not that we get our own plans and hope that God gets in on our plans. No, it is to find out what God is doing and to say, God, I want a part in what you are doing. You see, that's involved with the stewardship of life, that God has created me for a purpose and God has entrusted with me with gifts and talents and abilities. By the way, I believe personally that we will stand before God with two things. I believe we will stand before God with our God-given opportunities. Can I tell you something? No two people's opportunities are the same. And I will stand before God with the opportunities that He has given to me. But I believe secondly, I will stand before God with the gifts. God has gifted all of us and we are gifted differently. So I'm not going to stand before God with what someone else has been gifted with, I'm going to give a stewardship of what God has gifted to me. May God help us tonight to understand that He has called us. By the way, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who enables us to really live the stewardship of life. In fact, the longer that I'm in the ministry, the more and more I recognize that I can do nothing without Jesus Christ. I am... I am I'm hesitant to even say this, but I'm afraid that many of the first few years of me being in the ministry, I don't know that I did it for him. I think I did it for me. 
And I recognized that and God dealt with me about that in my life, wanting to make a name, wanting to others to be proud of me, wanting to go back to my home church and talk about the things that I said God had done, but really I was taking the credit for them. And God dealt with me that I was going to give an account before Him one day, not before someone else, but before a holy and a righteous God. Brethren, tonight, for the rest of your life, we must be reminded that we are stewards. I'm going to give you a few simple thoughts that God can help us tonight. Number one, God created us to be co-laborers with Him. Now, notice this phrase here where the Bible talks about that we are laborers, the Bible says, together with God. Verse number 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. On the way here uh, today as we were driving, I got to do something that I love doing as a pastor. We just had our missions conference a few weeks ago and we had a bunch of missionaries in. And uh, boy, I love having missionaries in. I just love it, you know. And uh, it's the biggest thing in our church and I want it to be that way. But I had the privilege to get on the phone and to call some missionaries. We just took on, we, last night as a church, I talked and we, we took on three new missionaries in our church. But I, I, you know, the funnest thing I love to do is call them and say, guess what? We're going to get to partner with you. I mean, it's a great call. But here is how I look at it. I look at this. The missionary is the one who's doing our church a favor because they're letting us partner with them as they serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not that we're doing them a favor, not that, hey, we're trying to, we try to be a blessing, but I look at it that we get to partner with them. And brethren, tonight, do we understand the great privilege that you and I, that God says to us, I'm going to let you work with me. We are laboring together with God. And when we understand that about the stewardship of life, It is not me coming up with my own ideals. It is not me trying to make a name for myself. I am laboring together with God. Years ago, um, it was a Saturday and and my boys were very young. And um, I had planted a tree at our house. And uh, God has not gifted me with a green thumb because the tree died, all right? And uh, and so (laughs) we we had to take up the tree. Well, my boys, I think Caleb at the time was, I don't know, six, seven years of age. I mean, very young. And Joshua, I mean, he was very young and all of that. And, and I remember that I could take care of the tree. I mean, it wasn't very big. The boys were small. And I said, all right, boys, come on. I'm going to let you help me here. To be honest with you, I didn't need their help. I could have done it quicker without their help. They had the small little shovels. I mean, the tiny little things. And boy, they were digging and they were digging, of course, my shovel was a lot bigger. Really, I'm the one who unearthed the tree. But you know what? The end of the day, we had taken the tree out. Boy, the boys were so proud. They were so grateful for what they had done. They told mom, mom, look what we had done. And the whole time, I just let them have a part in what I was doing. Brethren, that's what the Lord does. God is the one who gives the increase. We may plant, we may water. That's a blessing. But God gives the increase. And I think sometimes we have the ideal, look what I'm doing. I'm doing such a great, great honor to the Lord. No, we are honored to get to be a part of God's work. We are laboring together with God. In fact, as we think about the stewardship of life, I believe this. The children God has given to me, they are really the Lord's. They belong to Him He created them and He gifted them and He has a purpose and a plan. So in a sense, I'm working with God to help them follow Jesus Christ with their life. And you know what? When we have that ideal, it changes everything about how we view our families, how we view our spouse, how we view our church, because they are God's and I get to co-labor with the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, God has designed it that we have this privilege and that He enables us to labor together with Him. Let's also, number two, not only are we co-labors with the Lord, but God has made us stewards over His possession. Let's take our Bibles go to Matthew chapter number 25. Matthew chapter 25. We are stewards of His 
possessions. Matthew chapter 25, and let's begin in verse number 15, if you would please. And by the way, as we think about what God has given us to steward, I'm reminded of what the young man who was going to get a marriage license, he was young, he was excited about getting married, and he stood before the clerk, and um, she handed him the marriage license, and um, he said to her, he said, ma'am, how much will that be? And she smiled a little bit. She said, $25 now, and as much as you can make the rest of your life, all right? (laughs) And um, it's kind of interesting, isn't it, you know? If you have children, that's exactly how it is, you know? But you know, the truth of the matter is, when we surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, really, in a sense, we are getting to work with God, but all that we do for the Lord is really His possession. We are just stewarding it. We are taking care of what really belongs to Him. The church that God has given me to pastor, it's not really my church. He said, I will build my church. He didn't say, I'd build your church. It's His. And that helps me often. And often, you know, know, we kind of think, man, I'll tell you, I'm having problems. But then I say, Lord, we're having problems with your church, you know. (laughs) And I've got some difficult things in your church, Lord. And uh, Lord, I need you to take care of some things in your church. And may God help us to look at life that way. Our marriages, our homes, our families... And when we have an opportunity like here at Fairhaven Baptist College that is investing in the lives of young people, really this college and church is God's. It belongs to Him. He raised it up. Now, yes, He put it in the heart of man as man obeyed Him and co-labored with Him. But this is the Lord's. We get to have the privilege to co-labor with Him, to give to His work but it's stewarding His possession. We come to Matthew chapter 25, and I want you to look at verse number 15. Let's start in verse number 14, and look what the Bible says. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Think of that, his goods. Let's read on. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. To every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and look at this word, and reckoneth with them. There's a reckoning day coming. A day coming that God is going to reckon. By the way, is it not interesting that we have these men and they took what the master had given to them. By the way, we really own nothing. We are just stewards of what God has given to us. And we are to take what God has given to us and invest it. And may I thank you tonight for you sustainers that you have followed the example of the Lord Jesus Christ in that He has placed things in your hand. He has blessed you monetarily and He has blessed you. And you have said, this is what God has put into my hand and I am just steward over His possession. And when we do that, there is blessing coming and because there is a reckoning day that will take place. In fact, tonight, do you understand that being the right kind of husband... Being the right kind of wife is really understanding that our marriage is a part of stewardship. In fact, let me put it to you this way. Do you understand that when God gives us children, we are to steward them? Let's take maybe a man that says, you know, I just don't have time to really take care of my children. I don't have time to spend time with them. That man is sinning against God's stewardship in his life. And maybe a a wife may say, I just don't have time to really love and care for my husband. Or a husband may say, I just don't have time to really spend with my wife. They are sinning against the stewardship that God has placed in their lives. May God help us understand we are stewards over His possession. Brethren, tonight, stewardship is really about 
declaring our dependence upon God. When we understand that we are co laborers with God, that we can do nothing in our own strength, then really stewardship is really a declaration of our dependence upon God. It is saying, God, I can do nothing worthwhile. I can do nothing of a good investment unless I am taking care of your possession, unless I am co-laboring with thee. In fact, as we think of stewardship, I want you to remember something. Our days are really a stewardship. Do you know that our days are a gift from God? And what we do with our days is really our gift to God. In a sense, we are saying, God, you have given me these days. None of us know tonight how long we have to live. But I can promise you this. I think as the songwriter said it, by and by when I look on his face... I wish I had given him more. I wish. Years ago, there was a man in our church, good man. He was a good friend to me. And his name was Phil. And he loved me and I loved him. He was just a good man. But I came to his, the side of his bed when he was soon to go home to be with the Lord in his 80s. And he said, Preacher, I want you to close the door. I want to talk to you for a second. And I said, Okay. And he looked at me, and with tears in his eyes, he said this. He said, Pastor, God called me to preach the Word of God when I was a teenager, but I ran from it. I was scared. I didn't want to be poor. And I guess that's what he thought of preachers. He said, I was scared. And he said, now, preacher, I'm getting ready to meet God. And I never did what God wanted me to do. I don't think I've ever forgot that day. Because that man did a lot with his life, but always in his heart was knowing that inevitable meeting with God. He was going to reckon with God. He was going to give an account of his stewardship before the Lord. Let me say this to you tonight. If you will settle the matter of stewardship, then everything else in your life will be settled. You know, when we come to our bodies, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. When I come to that understanding, then that settles what I take into my body, what I do with my body, because my body belongs to Jesus. When I understand my marriage and that God wants me to love and cherish and care for my wife and nurture my wife, that's the stewardship that God has given to me. You see, it changes our focus on what others are doing for us rather than what we are doing with God's possession. Can I say this tonight? She is God's daughter. And I'm taking care of God's daughter. That's a pretty big responsibility. And my children are children of God. They belong to the Lord. And my church is the church of the living God. It's the pillar and ground of the truth. And it changes everything. May God help us tonight to settle this matter of stewardship. Number three, the last thing. Not only are are we stewards of God's possession and we are co-laboring with the Lord... The thirdly and lastly, God will bring everyone to an account. Let's take our Bibles in closing and go to Luke chapter number 16. We'll go to one other place, but I want to show you Luke chapter 16 first. Brethren, there is coming a day that we will give an account before the Lord. There's coming that day. Years ago, when I was in high school, uh, I loved sports. I just loved them. And... uh, you can't really tell today, but I did when I was in high school. And I love track. And I remember, I think I was a sophomore in high school, and I had ran track that year, but I hadn't practiced. I had not trained. I had done nothing. I just showed up on track day and did not do very well. And I remember sitting there in the auditorium, and I remember they gave out the awards for track. Well, guess what? They didn't mention my name. Because I didn't deserve an award. And I remember sitting there that day, I'll never forget it, a sophomore in high school, and I remember thinking to myself, I wish I'd have worked harder. I wish. And you know, that day has come to my mind. That there is coming a day more than just a track award. It is a day that I will meet God. Stand before the Lord. And I I don't know what he will say, but could he say, Aaron, I gave you a great church. Aaron, I gave you a bride. Aaron, I blessed you with children. 
Aaron, I gave you opportunities. I gave you privileges. And what did I do with them? Luke chapter 16, verse number 1 says, And he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Now the implications of this two verses, the rich man here, we can apply this to our heavenly father who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He has given to us things that he has placed into our hands. And look at this, look what he says. The same was accused unto him that he has wasted whose goods? His goods. I do not want to waste what God has put into my hand. I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste His goods because I am going to give an account one day. John Wanamaker was a man that maybe you don't know much about, but he lived from 1838 to 1922. Now, when John Wanamaker was very just a young man, he was instrumental in his church. He loved his pastor. And he wanted to be a help. And the people got together one day and said, Boy, the street in front of our church is muddy. And we would love to have a paved street. Well, John Wanamaker, quite an industrious young man, organized and campaigned and they got a street, a brick street in front of the church. John Wanamaker began to grow in his Christian life. He devoted his heart to the Lord. And later, at the height of his business career, John Wanamaker had the largest merchandising company in America. In fact, he was a benefactor to such Christian causes as YMCA and evangelist D.L. Moody and others. He even served our country as the postmaster general of the United States. But right before he was going to accept this position of the postmaster general of the United States, I want you to listen to a a phrase or a little conversation that he had and listen to what he said. The only way I can take the job is if I can remain as the Sunday school teacher for my class at my church in Philadelphia. I believe God wants me to serve my country, but a part of my stewardship is also to keep my Sunday school class. Can I tell you what John Wanamaker did? For 57 years, he taught his Sunday school class. Can I tell you what he understood? He understood, God gave me a class. God gave me these boys. And I'm going to invest in them. And it's more important that I take care of them than be the postmaster general of the United States of America. You see, brethren, all of us can do something for the Lord. In fact, I... I, I think about the phrase that is given about Mary of Bethany in Mark chapter 14, where the Bible says she had done what she could. I pray one day God would say of me, He has done what He could with me. He's done what He could. I can't do everything. I may not be able to do great things in the eyes of men, but I simply want to do what I can. In closing, let's go to Luke chapter number 12. And I want you to see this here tonight. Luke chapter number 12, and I want to leave you with this thought. Luke chapter 12, and let us begin in verse number 13. Luke chapter 12 and verse number 13. Notice what the Bible says. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge? Or a divider over you. And he said unto him, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there... Well, I bestow all my fruits and my goods. 
And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. In verse number 20, if you're in the habit of maybe underlining things or write this word down, I want you to look at one word in closing. Look at the word when it says, Thou fool this night, thy soul shall be required of thee then. Do you know that all of us are coming to the then? You know what the then is? When this life is over, then. Then we will meet with God. Then. The opportunities... When we come to the then, is over. The opportunity to invest is over. The opportunity to make a difference. I want to say to you tonight, I listened to three young people that you made a difference in their lives. You are making a difference. But brethren, we are coming to that day where we give an account of our life before the Lord. Uh, Chris is here and he's probably the best friend that I have in the ministry, really. And we traveled together. God put us together. And, um, and I remember being on Neighborhood Bible Time with him, and, and God used him in my life in a tremendous way. I'm indebted to him for his influence in my life. But I remember both Chris and I felt while we were traveling that we're going to these churches, and, and we may never go back here, and we want to stand before God and know that we did everything that God wanted us to do. That, that, that drove us that summer. And can I tell you, because of it, God blessed and brethren, tonight, I am coming to the then. And I, I can tell you this, I don't know how long I have to live. But I can say this, I think, I will think, Lord, I wish I could have done more. Lord, I wish I'd have served more. I wish I'd have given more. I wish I had yielded more to Thee. Because the then is coming. Queen Elizabeth I of England, as she was dying, on her deathbed, she said, I will give all of my kingdom." For just a little more time. Her then came to pass. Brethren, we should never live now without thinking about the then. Because we will stand before the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer tonight. And may God help us. Father, I thank you for the people that are represented here tonight. Lord, many of them I do not know. But you know what they have given. You know, Lord, that their labor is not in vain. And Lord, you will bless them. You will reward them for their giving. And Father, I pray for people that are giving that they will continue to give. And you will bless them that they may give more. I pray for others that may be contemplating about giving. That Lord, they would think about the then. And they would think about the stewardship of life. And that, Father, they would invest in your work. Lord, we praise you tonight that we get to work with you. We praise you tonight that we get to labor with you. Lord, what a privilege, what an honor. Lord, that you would choose people like us. And, Lord, we would have the privilege to work with thee. Father, bless us, strengthen us, and use us for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.